As I studied the inefficiency of cycling, I came across a few interesting reads on thermodynamics, specifically the second law of thermodynamics. Now, the first you've probably heard of, and it goes something along the lines of, the change in internal energy of a system is equal to the work done by or to the system and the heat that flows in or out of it. Internal energy equals work plus heat. Or in other words, the total energy in the universe stays the same. It cannot be created or destroyed. We've all heard of that before. Now, the second law of thermodynamics, which you probably aren't familiar with, has more to do with the nature of energy, and it goes something along the lines of, as energy is processed, entropy or disorder always increases. Basically, the more energy you use, the crazier it gets. Or, in other words, there's a net increase in disorder. That sounds pretty cool. Imagine the giant ball of fire that Doc Ock tried creating in Spider-Man 2. All you Marvel nerds out there know what I'm talking about. The bigger it got, the more out of control it got, or the, the crazier it got. That is what we're talking about. The second law of thermodynamics is exactly why we can't use 100% of the energy we consume into mechanical energy in the form of pedaling our bikes faster. There will always be other forms of energy instead of the energy that we desire. Or in other words, the sad reality is that there's always going to be unusable energy. This is why our cars have exhaust pipes. The car burns the fuel we put into it and two things happen during that burning of that fuel, movement and heat. Some of that fuel is used to project the car forward via movement and some of that energy is lost as heat and not used to propel the car forward. Now I think we're all okay with saying that, that there's heat and movement when we, when we burn fuel. However, I think the part that most of us get a little upset about is the exact ratio of heat to movement. And unfortunately, when it comes to engines, it's about an 80% loss to heat and 20% moving the car forward. And also, unfortunately, our bodies are only a little bit more efficient with about 25% getting used to propel us forward and the other 75% being lost as heat. Now there is a little bit of a plus side to this because our bodies do have to maintain a very specific heat uh, temperature, body temperature, and so some of that heat that gets lost actually is used to keep our bodies warm, especially in cold weather, right? Uh, we go out on a ride and we can feel our body warm up as we start riding our bike and that's because some of that energy is getting transferred to heat which is usable and useful but when it comes to pedaling our bike it's not so much of a good thing because us bike racers want every last ounce of calorie that we're consuming to be burned as energy into the movement of the pedals and the wheels forward and faster down the road we want that however that's not how it works Another thing to consider is that your body also has a lot of other functions it's got to maintain while we're bike, bike riding. You can't just shut down your brain, for instance, because you're racing your bike. I mean, your body still has to keep your brain alive and your gut alive and all the other parts of your body alive while you're pedaling your bike. So some of that energy is being used to maintain bodily functions as well. Side note here. Your body is pretty smart about how it prioritizes its energy consumption. When you're racing a bike, your body knows, okay, we need to fuel the muscles because the muscles need the fuel. And so what it actually does is it will slow down blood flow to other parts of your body like your digestive system. And so this is often why we get stomach cramps when we try to eat too much on the bike or eat at all on the bike. If you're going really hard during a bike race, like max effort and you try to eat, not a good combo because there's very little blood flow going to your digestive system right there, which turns out doesn't feel that good. Okay, back to the main idea. With all of these energy transfers and bodily functions happening, we're always losing heat throughout those processes. 
However, when we aren't riding our bikes, our bodies can manage this. Or in other words, we don't overheat. Our body is still losing energy as heat, but it's not quite noticeable. Now go hop on your trainer and you'll notice that heat very quickly. This is the second law of thermodynamics in action. As the body is using more and more energy to pedal the bike, entropy increases in the form of heat. Now increase that energy that's happening, so, or in other words, increase the intensity of how hard you're riding your bike. If you go from just riding endurance up to threshold, that creates more disorder or that creates more heat because more energy is being used. And the second law of thermodynamics says that as energy gets used, disorder or craziness, or in this, or in this case, heat increases. And that's why you notice a bigger puddle of sweat under your bike when you do threshold intervals versus an easy spin. Let's let Alex Hutchinson sum it all up for us. The human body is quite literally a furnace. It transforms the energy from food into mechanical work, and this transformation generates heat as sometime useful and sometime inconvenient byproduct. The harder you work, the more heat you generate. Now, as I think about this second law of thermodynamics and how the craziness in the world is always increasing as we use energy, I think of some application in the real world. First of all, I think about crit racing. The first couple laps aren't too crazy, the whole middle of the race isn't too crazy, but in the last five laps of a crit, man, entropy is through the roof. Craziness is happening, attacks are happening, that's when all the crashes happen is in the last couple laps of the race. So as you're racing a crit, the entropy is going up and up and up and up the closer you get to the finish or the more energy that you use throughout the race. Another real life example that I like to think of is my daughter. When my daughter was a little baby, she could barely crawl around, maybe lift herself up. Craziness levels were pretty manageable. Now she's like body slamming me every night before bed and jumping off things and trying to crawl up onto things and climbing out of her crib and all that crazy stuff. Uh, 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 I'm gonna get up. I'm gonna get up. Uh, uh. Oh, she slammed. So the older she gets, I'm noticing the crazier she gets as well. Entropy is increasing. Just a real life application of thermodynamics right there for you. To be quite honest, at the end of this video, I'm not quite sure how the second law of thermodynamics is gonna help you with your cycling goals or improve your performance, but I thought it was an interesting topic. It was a rabbit hole that I went down. I love rabbit holes, so thanks for listening. If you wanna work one-on-one -on -one with a coach, I would tell you to check out Ignition Coach Co. Blink. And if you want an easier approach to coaching and training, you can check out my training plans that I have available. Both of those descriptions are in the notes below. Thanks for watching.